Top on the brief this morning is the palpable anxiety that a planned nationwide protest appears to be generating, compelling President Bola Tinubu to consult with traditional rulers behind closed doors. Some of the first class monarchs were at the state house, includes the Oni of Ife, the Sultan of Sokoto, in attendance also uh, were the top members of the president's cabinet, APC governors, the national security advisor. Uh, the Inspector General of Police, among others, consulted with the President in a last-minute move to dissuade organizers of the end bad governance protests to shelve their plans and give government more time to activate their policies. In the meantime, the Department of State Services is asking persons and groups yet to identify themselves in the public uh, as leaders of the nationwide protests to shelve their plans and avoid any semblance of anarchy. In a statement by the Director of Public Relations and Strategic Communications, Ms. Peter Funaya, uh, the service says that while peaceful protest is a democratic right of citizens, it has confirmed a sinister plan by some elements to infiltrate the protest and use it to cause chaos and extreme violence in the land. The service claims it has identified the reason behind the protest to be uh, political as those behind it intend to use violence to smear the federal and sub-national government, make them unpopular and pit them against the masses with long-term objective of achieving a regime change, especially at the center. A similar sentiment is shared by the defense headquarters over the planned protest, warning that the armed forces won't allow violent protests that can degenerate into anarchy. The Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, at a press briefing in Abuja, hinted that organizers of the planned protest intend to replicate the recent protest run and turn anarchy a demonstration in the East African country of Kenya. General Buba said although citizens have a right to ventilate their grievances, the military won't condone any form of violent gatherings or protests in the guise of agitation. The level of violence being envisaged can only be described as a state of anger. The armed forces on his part will not stand by and allow anarchy to befall our nation. This is because we have seen wars and have witnessed anarchy in countries in which we are operated, particularly during the times of ECOMO or during our peacekeeping operations in various countries. I believe that some people out there may fantasize about war or state of panic, thinking that it is like what they see in the movies. I assure you that war or a state of anarchy is not what you see in the movies. It involves real people, real situations, and real life. Well, it's a different tone from the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria who are asking security agencies and the government to ensure adequate protection for those who will join in the nationwide protest. The president of the TUC, Mr. Festus Sisifo, maintains protest is a fundamental right provided for by the Nigerian constitution, although it distances itself from the protest. Mr. Sufil also clarifies reasons why organized labor settled for 70,000 Naira as a new national minimum wage. You know, as a trade union Congress of Nigeria, you know, we, we, all, we have been involved in several protests. We are also um, happy with some of the comments that we are hearing from different quarters, uh, assuring that uh, when the protests do take place, that these people will be protected. Because our concern really, we don't want a situation whereby uh, the protest goes on and at the end of the day, it leads to violence. So we want to hear by call on the Inspector General of Police and the entire security agencies uh, to do everything possible to provide security for whoever intends to carry out protest so that such protests will not degenerate into chaos. The leadership has never sat down one day on its own to call for strike or a protest.
All we know is that the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is very clear on the issue of peaceful protest. And the Police Act also mandated the police that when there is a protest, you should ensure that um, there is law and order. You should ensure that those that are protesting are also protected. And away from the protests, the federal government says it has spent over $1.5 billion from 2020 to date to protect the nation's oil installations and carb crude oil theft. The secretary to the government of the Federation, Senator George Akume, disclosed this at a public hearing of the House of Representatives on crude oil theft. Senator Akume was represented by the permanent secretary, General Services, Morris Nandi, says the federal government was worried about the reports of the Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NATI, which pointed to over $46 billion worth of stolen crude oil between 2009 and 2020. The government has invested considerable resources in combating this menace. Since 2020, expenditure aimed at addressing crude oil theft and securing our oil infrastructure has exceeded $1.5 billion. Let's also tell you that following the recent face-off between Dangote Refinery and the oil sector regulator, the Senate plans to invite the central bank, the Nigerian Port Authority, Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Dangote Group, and Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Heineken Lukbobri, among others, for questioning of alleged economic sabotage in the country's petroleum industry. This is according to the leader of the Senate and the chairman of the Senate Adult Committee on Alleged Economic Sabotage in the Nigerian Petroleum Industry at a media briefing. The chairman disclosed this at a 14-member committee constituted on July the 23rd will investigate billions of dollars spent on turnaround maintenance of the state-owned refineries in the last decade to address deep-seated challenges confronting the industry. The committee, along with Nigerians, is particularly interested in understanding why local refineries are not working, despite the substantial amount of money spent annually on their maintenance and operation. We will closely examine what the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited has been doing to address this persistent problem. And to electoral management, where the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, uh, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has declared that the commission is capable of successfully conducting local government election if given the responsibility to do so by law. He, however, raised the question of funding for their uh, by-elections. The INEC uh, chairman gave the assertion when he appeared before the Joint Committee on Electoral Matters to present their own DOE and a DOE elections off-cycle election budget. If, if this responsibility for conduct of local government election is transferred to INEC, can INEC cope? The answer is yes, I can cope. So if we are asked to do these elections, yes, we can. And our track record actually proves that we can do it. Let's now talk business. The federal government plans to issue $500 million in domestic foreign currency bonds in the next three to four weeks. And this is coming from the Minister of Finance, Mr. Wale Adun, during a press briefing in Abuja on economic recovery and growth. Ms. Adu explains that the bonds will use Nigeria's financial system rather than Western structures or euro bonds. The goal is to attract foreign currency from Nigerians, Nigerians abroad and other interested in supporting the Nigerian government's economic reforms. He adds that the government has no current plans to issue euro bonds and will focus first on the success of these domestic bonds. On the international scene, residents of a historic town of Jasper and the surrounding national park are counting their losses following a ravaging of uh, wildfire. An official from Alberta provided a uh, province rather says it is still out of control and Alberta Premier Premier rather describes it as the worst nightmare for any community fighting back uh, tears during a press briefing. An estimated 25,000 people have now been evacuated from Jasper National Park following homes that have now been destroyed. Well, Super Falcons of Nigeria were unlucky after 90 minutes losing to Brazil 1-0. In our first match at this year's Paris Olympics, so Brazil beat Nigeria after Gabi Nunes scored from an assist by Marta. The assist had converted a goal earlier that was disallowed. Brazil dominated Nigeria in their ball possession, but the Super Falcons proved quite competitive. The Super Falcons had a great chance 
when Captain Rashidat Ajibade created an opportunity but lost it due to lack of support. Well, better luck next time, uh, apparently. So those are the stories we've been tracking for you in the last 24 hours to the early part of this uh, uh, this morning. And of course, we'll sh uh, shape part of our conversation for the show and the rest of the day.